Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Hey everybody, this is Scarecrow from Indiana. Why don't you go ahead and listen to uh, Can Crushers? This guy has everything, and he, he will take you up to the heights. So listen to Can Crushers. Again, Scarecrow says, listen to Can Crushers. Hello! Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Is the spotlight in this? It is. <laughs> Bailey, it's all about Bailey. That's all we're doing this week is Bailey. We decided that we were going to do something a little bit different. You're going to get episodes like this every so often. And since Halloween is legit, probably this weekend for most people that are celebrating, picking up candy and everything. But the real Halloween is next Tuesday, but sure, it's celebrated. We're going to do spooky wrestlers, and it's kind of just a little bit, you know, who we thought was spooky in our childhood today, whatever. By the way, mm-hmm. that's Sir Michael Jenks. I'm Mark the Mark. Welcome to Camp Crushers. Thanks for having me. I, I'm honored to be here. Since we're doing the spookiest, I mean, the spookiest member of this podcast needs to show up and uh, do some stand step up. Listen, you thought of this. I had no... no I know. <laughs> five years of doing podcasts, I've... How often can we do the spooky though? Like this is a one and done probably. This is one and done for sure. I mean, we combined everything that could be spooky that we could have made into two years, but I think, hey, you know what? Why not? Just have a little fun with it this year, and then next year maybe we'll uh, do something else that we can find make creepy. Who knows? Who has the deadliest blood or mist? It's mist or yeah? What's this? Yeah, well, that's a good one. I like that one. Ah, oh, look at you. So now you got the inspiration and you're ready to go. The creative juices are going. That's what you do. Yeah, Ride yeah. or die. This is. Oh. <laughs> you should have saw that, by the Hold way. Hold on. <laughs> I'll Prince Nana it while you do the ride and die. <laughs> it's a nene over here. So you won't get the full interaction of us telling you that we're still mad at NCAA for some of the rules that happened this weekend. You'll get those on the weekend show. Oh, yeah. oh, 100%. I have a lot to bitch about in the opening segment already. <laughs> it has nothing to do with wrestling. And they are duly noted. We'll keep it at the spotlight realm, though. So, ten wrestlers, three matches. Of course, I went off kilter. But we'll get there, right? We, we both did, so it's all good. You know, we match each other's energy. Bailey's squeaking a toy off in the distance, so when that gets picked up here... It would be fantastic. So it's the creepy door squeaking in the back. It's yeah, not- that's yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. I have to tell myself it's Bailey so I don't wet myself. So that's just where we're at right now. It's, a, it's really uh, it's a creepy house over here. <laughs> it's a Nickelodeon, isn't it called like the Fun House or something like that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The Loud no, House. The Loud. Oh, you're talking about the Loud House. Wow, you pulled the Loud House out. Yeah. Like the I thought, house Bray Wyatt. I get well, that. I get that, but I mean, the Loud House for me because Bray is closer to the age that would actually watch that. But wow, I that. Okay, I mean, hey. <laughs> All right, I'm sure you guys are clamoring to see who I bring to the table, who Sir Michael Jenks brings to the table, and then matches. I'm sure we'll go a little bit too much in depth about matches. That's why we limited it to three. Yeah. Because most of spooky matches are not good. They're not. I mean, there's 
there's spooky matches that are interesting in concept, but poor in execution. Some that are like, they somehow work. They seem ridiculous when you think about it and corny, but they work tremendously. And then there's some that uh, just flat out Suck. did nothing. And I made sure I picked one that did that. And that met both those categories. So it's creepy from all angles in that regard. Look at you. You know, hey, Look that creepy hypnology. Yeah, you know, I I reached into the bag of tricks to pull one match specifically out. I may laugh at it, but it's a great match nonetheless. I'm wondering what it is. But you're going to have to wait. know exactly. Yeah, well, I think you would know exactly what match it is. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait and see. Put your guesses in the comments right now. We'll see. Ready? Let's power through this. It's quickly, because we don't do good jobs on spotlights doing our due diligence. I don't, at least. That's fair. So, it's spooky time. Spooky. I just wanted to do that. I was waiting to do that at some point in this podcast, so I wanted to get it out of the way now. I know we got to pay the bills and all that, but... <laughs> Collar and elbow hats, but he's teased all the cool stuff that <laughs> the hooligans have down there. Use our promo code. Can crush you get yourself 10% off. Where like, can they listen to us? Oh, well, we have all the major podcasting networks like Spotify, you know, uh, Google Podcasts, da 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 da. But you got Podurama too, which with a lifetime membership, you get 50% off on their special offer that's going on right now. So you can listen to our sultry voices with the likes of Stone Cold. Bubba Ray, the Busted Open Crew, and many others on Podurama. We also have a WWE affiliate code that if you listened, I'm going to get an email one of these days from these guys, either pulling the code or saying, hey, thanks for being legit honest with us. I did click it this week because they're going to buy something. It does give discounts on some stuff. It really does. So if you're looking to buy anything from WWEshop.com, Click on our affiliate code. It will give you a discount on some stuff, some stuff you'll pay full price on. No matter what you're buying it for, a loved one yourself or a Christmas present, which is probably a loved one as well, you'll help the podcast out. It's in the show notes. Just click on it. WW Shop. Boom. Save some money. Maybe. Yep. <laughs> Donate Maybe. back. Hey, that is a definite. You'll, you'll help us out. Yeah. That's what matters with the WW Shop code. Yeah. Threads. X. Facebook or Instagram, all that are now synced on my phone nicely. My new phone came Ooh. Monday. Eh, all of it's at Can't Crush your 69. Join the conversations, post some pictures, make fun of us, do whatever you want. Or call our hotline at 814-299-6687 to do that in person. Make sure you're limited to three minutes because we're sensitive. So... <laughs> <laughs> and if you're an independent wrestler, promoter, referee, ring announcer, you put a board in the ring and you do it every show and you would like to be involved in a spotlight like once previous in this one, because we're essentially spotlighting ourselves this week. But we're spotlighting some of the spookiest things out there this week. Us. <laughs> well, yeah, but... Can crush Tomato, tomorrow. at gmail.com. Boom. Reach out. We'll get you set up for an interview. We'd love to hear your story about how you got into professional wrestling, all the years, months, days, hours that you've been in the business, and how you're going to conquer the world. And I'm not making fun of that. That's true life. I love spotlights. Well, I love listening to it, too, because you hear people's backstories. But to your point, you hear about some dreams, some aspirations, like, just getting to know the people better and getting a good spotlight on some young indie talent. So hopefully someday the big, the big leagues call and take them up and enjoy and take in their talent and showcase it in the proper way. So spotlights are amazing for that. Yeah. We've one that I'll always, you know, promote well, a couple. I always promote, 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 but right after her first match as Nikita Knight against Thunder Rosa on AEW dark, now you know her as Thea Hall. Hale. Mm-hmm. All of them. <laughs> I, also, Hale. I, I know her by her personal name as well. And I'm not, but that's why it slipped. Uh, she instantly was taken to NXT. 
She yeah. wrestled like three indie matches in her life, and then pring, and she, now she's tagging with JCJ. We've had her. Yeah, I mean it's fantastic, and probably one of the better parts of Chase U, I would say, is what she is. So yeah, the best part. The best part. I was trying to be nice. I was trying to be nice. All right, here comes Al Snow to tell you more about Collar and Elbow, and then we'll be back, spooking you up. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is Megan Myers, and you're listening to the Can Crushers podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> To this Frankenstein creation that we are highlighting today, the spotlight on the spookiest wrestlers and matches in history. I thought you were gonna say Cotter for a minute because it sounded like you were gonna say, Welcome back, Cotter. Oh my! Well, I wasn't digging that back deep in my bag of tricks. <laughs> this is a shot in the dark. How we're gonna do it? That's why you guys love Can Crushers. Yeah. So essentially, we both have ten. Yeah. Right? Yep. I have honorable mentions. You probably have something in the... So, I threw some down. Yep. All right. I'm going to throw out my three honorable mentions. You do out your some that you have written down. Yep. And I don't... Do you have them ranked? I don't have them ranked. No. I don't either. All right. Then yeah. we'll just go back and forth. Because we'll yeah. probably double cross and all of this. Oh, Plus, yeah. We didn't fucking talk about this at all. There's the explanation. Yeah. Explicit, I mean, for the show. At least once. All right, so my honorable mentions for okay. spookiest wrestlers in history. The Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Didn't make the one. full list, but he was he was there. He was in- instrumental. He was. He was. He had a... And whatever the hell was going on there, he was instrumental in <laughs> Right? Yeah. In the Dungeon of Doom. If they were more... Besides Earthquake, Brutus, Beefcake, and like somebody that we didn't know that was spooky in the Yeti, he would have got there. But I, I understood what they were trying to do. What I'll say is this. If they weren't named Zodiac, Shark, and well, whatever the fuck the Yeti was, that was – I think it would have been a lot better as well. Yeah. That's what made it a little more hokey was like, oh, okay, come on, guys. We can't just call these guys like some – get a good name on them, yeah. something creative. <laughs> like back then, Alistair would have been scary. It would have been Crowley. Just call somebody Crowley. Would have made Alan die. Yeah, and it was like during Children of the Corn. It was, yeah. And I think they were just. A, I, I think they wanted to make it spooky, but not too spooky type thing. They're still playing that. Oh, also, cool. I don't think the creative juices oh. were going. I don't think the creative juices were going strong at that point either. Uh, my other one is the Moon Dogs. Like the Moon Dogs. Oh, were okay. Essentially, in territory time, they they won championships and everything. They were by the time I watched them, Mi- <sighs> Cujo was just out. So this one racked my brain a little bit too. So they were kind of <sighs> just scary dog guys. Yeah. So I could understand. I was probably over that age, but maybe a little bit younger, you know, crazy hair, ripped on a bone. Right. So, yeah. No, I get that. I get that. And one of us didn't make the overall list because she was spooky, but more on the crazy end. Like she, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to go. I want to spoil it because it did. She did make my list because I was totally afraid of her. I'll spoil one, but now 
when I was a kid growing up in the nineties, that whole thing freaked me out. Like whether it was from bam, bam, or, you know, moving along the lines and just coming out the gravel voice type. Now I just, it spooked the hell out of me because it didn't, I couldn't comprehend what I was saying. I think at the time. So Understandable. yeah. So it, that one, that one definitely tripped me up. Okay. We can, we can come back. If yep. you have we'll more come back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So honorable mentions from you. Honorable mentions from me. Um, I just thought of one and I didn't put it on my list, but I'm going to say it now. James Mitchell was one of the scariest guys just as a manager overall. I know he's still knocking it around in NWA right now, still doing his thing, but high, high point TNA, he was on yeah. fire. And to that extent, another member of my honorable mention, Abyss. I mean, just thinking he about was on the cusp. For he was on the cusp. He was kind of you could say what you want about how he played, like kind of been like a Kane Undertaker type thing. But in the realm of what he accomplished in TNA, and that he was kind of a creepy character and just an unknown masochist of sorts coming in there. You just didn't know what he was thinking at the time. And this is why the show is going to go along, folks. <laughs> Met him at an autograph signing in Erie. It's when oh, yeah. my wife and I went to a TNA taping like a year prior to working at the Seawolves. We went oh, okay. out we went to a TNA taping. Kelly fell in love with this human being. Like he had his mask on, but he was also selling like yeah. makeshift cheap masks. Kelly bought one of his masks, had it signed. I now am mad because of no, who the hell knows where it's at yeah. 30 years later. Not 30, but you understand. Yeah, right. Um. He was so nice, and that's why, because that played, and all wrestlers are, most all wrestlers are nice. Um, That's why he didn't make the list or the honor, because that's the memory of I have of him. Like, he stood up and gave Kelly a hug and said, oh, my God, thanks for coming. And he was just so personal with anybody, scaring the little Christ out of all the kids. <laughs> right. But, like, people that, you know, my age back then, were like right in our 20s or whatever, late 20s, <laughs> he was... Ghosts in your He's house. coming to get me, and this is what's happening now. What is that? What kind of spirits did we conjure up with this conversation? He, uh, he was just so nice. He, he was, and Kelly loves him to this day. If we're, I'm watching anything old, she's like, I love him. And I'm like, yeah. Let me, I popped and laughed so hard when he showed up in WWE during the pandemic era with AJ Styles. His, his name is Joseph Park, obviously. And like, I can't remember what it is, but. When he showed up, I was like, man, I'm loving this. I love I love the character, and then I love this goofy alter ego he always had. So it was a double persona, and I think that kind of dragged him out of the main list and into the honorable mention list. So I I do appreciate the work, and that's funny that, but you know, he's got to sell those tickets, and hey. And he sold at least one mask that night. Yeah. At least one mask to Kelly. It was yeah. a successful night. It was. Uh. I have one more. I'll do one more. I'm going to go with Doink. I mean, early Doink was very, if the clown, it was perfect timing. It had just come out televised series with Tim Curry. He was just a creepy ass clown when he first walked out, came out on the scene. Yeah, he got goofy later on, but it was creepy as hell. And the man beneath the makeup, even creepier. Each creepier. So I think that whole award kind of puts him just outside the top ten for me. Get it. Get it. And we said we didn't rank them. So we'll say our top ten, but they're not yeah. ranked. Right. That's excellent. Right. All right. Um, I'm going to go first. And I'm going to steal the, the thunder within itself. And I'm sure you're like, ah. And I put them together because they are together, ride or die. Yeah. All three of them. It's Kane, Undertaker, and Paul Bear. Yeah, that's. I mean, I was doing. We'll just knock two off my list. I had. Un, I just associate Paul Bear with Undertaker, anyways. And I had Undertaker and Kane on my list separated. But I mean, it's true. You have to. The Brothers of Destruction. Everything they did. Undertaker. I remember 1994 at the Erie Civic Center. The lights went out. Gong hit. I was scared shitless. But I still had an Undertaker hat. So still. I on still TV, wanted to great. rep TV. He was away from me in the arena. Not so much. Didn't let, I was, I was too young. I was baby Mike at 
six years old was not losing, was not happy with what was happening in that arena, but it was fantastic. And I remember seeing them. Did you get the whole, they turned the air conditioner on like mega, mega high. Yeah. It got really cold and like just eerily creepy and all that stuff. Yeah. It was the whole atmosphere in the old, uh, what was Tulio arena at the time was just the creepiest thing going on. It was that, but that's how you build it. You build that atmosphere up to make it even more scary, more uh, inclusive. I want to say maybe that's not the right word, but it it brings you into the element and it makes you feel like, oh my god, I'm like in a graveyard and yep. shit's about to get real. So, yeah, had that same experience in the Civic Arena uh, the night him and mankind tore the house down oh, and oh, yeah. the house fell and everything. Yep. And I was high five and God at that time. <laughs> because but I think I, I've seen The Undertaker a couple times. Like, it, once I had good seats, okay, mm-hmm. and to see him, and you get to see him doing things like prior to the, the mist and the fog and the smoke yeah. and all that, it takes it away a little bit. So I really enjoyed being next to God. At the old Civic Arena, you know, dead on watching him come out because you're above him, but you can't really see him because he's so far away doing the thing. So I often, we're going to wrestling soon and we wanted the best seats of the best seats of the best seats. And that's cool because especially with the the crazyisms that's going to be going on that night. But there's times now doing the podcast and everything. I want the worst seats because you're looking down and you, you get the you're, whole aura. You take it all in at, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And <laughs> that's sometimes, the, that is definitely the funnest thing about that. Yeah. It's cool to be up front, but when you can take in the entire environment as a whole, there's nothing, you, especially with the Undertaker involved, you can't beat it. Right. You so. want to talk about Kane a little bit, too, since we both have we, one right we, now? We probably should. I mean, we did mention him. But, I mean, Kane, from ripping the door off to that just initial run before the WrestleMania match of him going toe-to-toe with The Undertaker, having similar powers, doing all that with Paul Bear, and just seemingly being invincible, right? And then even after that, the whole Inferno match, setting each other on fire and things of that nature and – everything that he did with Vader and like just everything that led up to the night he won the title for 24 hours. It was creepy. It was something totally different, something you didn't ever see. Like even with the undertaker, they never took it to that level for that level. And I think the attitude error benefited Kane a lot for debuting there, because I think if he debuted even two years earlier, he would have just been a hokey and undertaker rip rip off and we wouldn't be talking about him today. It's a difference of two years with that. His entrance. And mm-hmm. if we're gonna keep you know keep on okay. this too. The fire just coming That's out true. of the ring. You can see his movement when he's doing it, but you don't know when the person coming. Back is gonna hit it. And it's yep. still I would jump probably at this day and age when the fire is gonna come out because it's just Boom! And then the, yep. the yeah. So. The funny, hey, the best clip that I've ever seen on WWE TV was the Raw where Coach is leaning back and they shoot off the pyro for Kane to come out on, and Coach just falls backwards because he's <laughs> totally shit shit his pants at this point because Kane just came out. But even then, the music around the way his music hit that original music hit. Yeah was just on point and just really belabored the point home. I remember when he came back, back in uh, February 2000, it, they had a multi-man match, whatever, and he came back to attack X-Pac and DX and all that. In the whole Paul Bear walking out into just a arena that's blackened with red on the screen, and they just kind of tunnel it on the screen. That's when they used red correctly. That's Yeah, that's when they definitely used red correctly, not for other ends, <laughs> entrance for this thing. But they did just that one alone was just made it, made it everything about it. And that's what made Kane special and really differentiated himself from his brother in that regard. He could do different things. He could be 
a little more athletic, a little more strong, but it also he was just built for right. They built him up right to be an indestructible force. And then the third cog in all of this, Paul Bear, legit James Moody being a yeah. legit mortician. Yeah. Just adds to it. Because he knew what buttons to push, how to do it, how to play it. And the high pitch, oh, yeah. I didn't do that right, but it that was, was what it was. Yeah. But it was, I, I remember getting goosebumps when The Undertaker came back as the original, like, dead man back in 04 because of that, oh, yeah, when he walked out. And I'm like, oh, man, this is so freaking cool. But it's also goosebumps are piling up and the slow walk through the druids. It was perfectly done. That, oh, yeah, just scared the dogs out of the studio. <laughs> You're welcome. What was your favorite um, character of... Undertaker and Kane version of them. I'm assuming. So yeah. that's, I definitely want to say it was the, I, it was that in between for the Undertaker where he wasn't necessarily the zombified mortician, zombified corpse, the, but he wasn't one. fully the Prince of darkness yet. It was that in between where, he could just walk the line, right? Right. Now, I loved American Badass and all of that stuff, but that was the line. I think that one was, like, the perfect combo just to kind of get the right setting. Like, that was the right version of The Undertaker for me. And for Kane, I loved the original version. I loved, for spookiest conversation, the original version takes it above all, although Stalker unmasked Kane unhinged was setting JR on fire, so that one was pretty cool. But for me, it was always the 2001, like into 2002 Kane. That was just that monster that roamed around with the Undertaker and kind of took people off guard. Because I think that was probably his strongest year as a performer, just based with the talent he faced all the way up to WrestleMania 18. But just how he carried himself and how they did things. I know I'm going to probably get a lot of hate uh, because they were a tag team, but that version of Kane really stuck with me. And that's the version that really exemplifies in my mind with, with Kane right now. What about you? Both, I'm going to be very generic. I'm not going to get into as depth as you did. I, I love both OGs. Yeah. Uh, I love the zombified yeah. Undertaker where the urn meant everything. It hasn't been stolen by right. 75 people yet. People. Melt down into this and that. Yeah. But that one. And I... I still think, I, and I think this is going to be a topic that we're going to talk about somewhere down the line. Favorite masks. Mm. Um, the the OG Kane mask was that, probably one of, that makes my top 10. I'll tell you guys right now. I'm not going to tell you where, but that makes my top 10 of masks for, for wrestlers, essentially. Yeah. Because once we got into Burnt and you can see his eyes. Yeah, yeah, said, yeah. You know, like, you knew, you finally put it together. Like, oh shit, this is Dr. Yankum. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the dentist with bad teeth. I would Maybe we write that down for next year. Top 10 masks for the Halloween season. But anyways, um, I agree with that. And listen, okay, this is not anything spooky about it. But to me, every time I think of the OG Undertaker, it always, I always have the same line pop into my head. And I always say it about different things. It's Piper when he first walks out and he goes, Look at the size of that ham hock. And he's just walking to the ring. It just pops into my head every time. And maybe that's what takes the OG Taker down a notch is because he's yelling about it. But he was it was creepy then. And if you haven't seen The Undertaker, uh, I think it's the A&E special where he talks about the character and they talk about building it up and how the eye roll didn't come. He just did it just to do it one time. And they were like, you have to keep doing it and all that stuff. It's fun to watch that transition and watch him go down that rabbit hole of, okay, this is how I become more and more like him. And I think that's what also made him scary, too. He lived the fucking character. He lived the character. He didn't go off course, not once during that time. He lived the character yep. through and through. So since I named three, essentially, all in one, who do you got? Technically, I'm at 3-2 because I named Luna. 
but you did all in one. So I'm going to go and go with the group I put as one, three members, and it's the Wyatt family. I'm going to go down this path. The whole cult leadership, the world, it got the whole world in his hand. The Sister Abigail promos, oh, my God, they were just so unique and special at that time. The debuts, the build-up, what Sister Abigail, the teacher man promo of all of them, it was just so beautifully done, and it really showed why it's creative side first coming out. I know he took a lot of inspiration from Waylon Mercy and that, but it was just a unique classic character and watching Rowan, these two big guys, Rowan and Harper, follow him around and do his bidding and that everything it was a perfect storm. Spoiler down to the lantern. Those three were on my list too. I and figured they were. So we might as well just talk about it. I mean, because you can't to me, you can't separate that group at that time because that's when it was functioning and going on all cylinders. Just the Beauty this of it. Prior to Danielson joining, prior yep. to Randy being a minute of it, right. and Alexa. I-, I loved as much as Alexa portrayed Sister Abigail yeah. is what we all put in our mind. I like not knowing that we were always talking about who the hell is going to be Sister Abigail, da 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 da. But yeah, because he, he really mind fucked you. Oh, and he did. That, the age of 40 at the age of 45 you're just like man this guy is just really spooky and it's creepy within it, it's crazy how dark and twisted he could get without getting dark and twisted you know what i mean like he didn't need he had the imagery but he didn't have it early on it was more about the power of my word i can creep you out and make you believe that I'm and he really turned every member of the audience into a cult member by that point yes and I think the creepiest thing he ever did besides all the great quotes that he had during that time was turning those kids on and singing I've got the whole world in my hand and circling John Cena in the ring that one Monday night on Raw that had to have been the creepiest most yes the lead singer king the, the lead singer kid, I mean, I don't want to meet in a dark alley. But no. They have that kid possessed. They have that kid possessed. He he had the eyes and everything, especially at Olymp- uh, Extreme Rules that following week. His yeah. eyes were big, and he was on it. I also feel like I've seen him around as an actor before. I know, but just the way he did it, he fucking hit it spot on and made that whole segment. He did, and that... You you brought up a name that I'm going to trickle to once we're done talking about the Wyatt family. But this was all Rotundo's stuff. Yeah. It, this is his vision and Luke Harper of just being uh, like he – I put him as the masochistic killer, you know, yeah. because he just had that wife beater. And, that nasty-looking wife beater, yeah. Yeah. And, and Rowan's it, just that creepy thug. lackey. Yeah, the thug, the lackey that just walks around and doesn't say much. Yeah. Just does what he's told. It at the ripe old age that we both were it didn't it, do enough in wrestling, but they'll never be forgotten. But especially two of the three, no shot on Rowan yeah, or anything, but right. two of the three whew, this brought it. Yeah, and I would have loved to seen what Harper could do with, or as Mr. Brody Lee with the Dark Order, and see how that could have grown with him. But if it was any indication with the Wyatt family, it could have just been one of the more specialer things that AEW had going for it over its four-year history. Um, but, God, he hit it right on the head, and he knew what he was doing with it. You brought up one other person that's on my list, Waylon Mercy. Yeah. This was younger, and I understood. He's on my list is what I'm saying. Yeah. I understood what they were trying to do. No shot on the man, but I just don't think Danny Spivey 
was the guy to play Waylon Mercy. I love the character and the true cult leader, the, yeah. the Dahmer or the whatever that they were. What was the one with Haley's Comet? Um, oh, that shit. Uh, I know which one you're talking about. It was yeah. like the Church of God or something like that, or the Kids of God. That's yeah. where I put him. Like an and an Angelica, and what is the word I'm looking for? Are you looking for evangelical or yeah. and, okay? Him turned into Dahmer is where I put Waylon Mercy. That was he'll do anything to get a dollar away from you and then screw you over. This that he was just yep. true cult leader. I just don't think they had the right person picked. And this, again, no shot on Danny Spivey. He just done so much in his career, just not the right guy. It never got over. Well, it never got over, and I, he ha, he was on the list of people I would consider for honorable mention. He he also got injured a lot yeah. in that run, so it kind of derailed anything that they were trying to build with him. And you know, and that's not a knock on him. It just that's just how nice. it goes. That's life. And when you, he was just at that point in his career that it was going to impact him some way somehow. So yeah, he was definitely older in his career. Yeah, he was definitely older in his career. So you know, it just it, there's just nothing you could do about it at that point. But he had the look for it. It was just it was there. It just didn't get over like it should have. Yeah. So who do you got next? Well, you know what? I might as well just stay here because I did double dip a bit, and uh, I had to go the fiend and very the fiend and the firefly funhouse for my next I'll entry. I broke them up because to me it is two different stages and two different characters, both equally and honestly at the exact on different ends of the spectrum of what you could do on the scale of creepy. One uses his words that he can paint pictures of imagery with to kind of suck you in and make you believe in his fireflies. The other played a very, you know, Mr. Rogers esque character, but could flip you flip that coin and he turns into an absolute monster of a man. That's what that dynamic in understanding how to play and flip your mind like that was so enthralling over the years in the buildup of you sitting there it was like in April and you're like, what the fuck is Barry Wyatt doing with this red sweater? And then you got the muscle man dance with Huskis pig and all of these guys, you got Vince McMahon doll running in and out. You're like, what Don't forget rambling rabbit. Don't forget rambling. Not rabbit. rambling rambling. I mean, rest in peace. Cause he always died in every episode or Abigail, Abby, the witch or Waylon, the buzzard, go back to tie back to Waylon, the mercy. Yep. He had these characters that were like, you're trying to figure it out. And then they started squeezing in the fiend, the fiend, the fiend. And then when he debuted that Monday night before SummerSlam, which I think now I was skeptical of it. Then I love the decision now to have him show up before his debut. And they were hyping it up against Finn. It was a debut debut, but then it made it more surreal that this care, this thing could just come at the drop of a hat whenever they wanted to. And when he attacked Finn, I'm like, back then I was like, why would they do that this week? And now I'm like, that was so fucking smart by them. It was such a good character. Say what you will about the red lighting in fucking yeah. Goldberg during this whole thing. But the fiend was just beautifully done in a way. And the way he, you talked about Alexa earlier, that was just, the creepy transformation of Alexa was it rejuvenated was, her for a while. It rejuvenated her for a while. It was the Julia Hart turn without doing the mist and having the slow burn. It was just this random corruption thing. It was just such a beautiful run and so well done that I loved all of it about it. I wish we could have saw more of the new character that he brought in. I know we all do, but Man, I I got to give the fiend its flowers. It's just so good. Agreed, then. No, we're gonna have eleven on the list. So. <laughs> I agree. Um, I'm gonna go to again, no particular order. I'm yeah. gonna go to a woman here. Okay. And I'm gonna go Sue Young, the undead bride. 
on my list as well. So nice. Yeah. That character with the undead bridesmaids, and then even when she turned into Susie after being hung from a literal staircase of sorts. Listen, say what you will about impact in that, but they had some they went deep and really dark with some of their imagery to make things happen. But Sue Young was such a unique and great character that they pulled out with that one. Yeah, grab grabbing the indie stars essentially the yep. the undead bridesmaids and yep. everything like out there. Her and Gail Kim, her and the the beautiful people. Yeah, uh, she just brought it. Like she spoiler wrestled a match this past weekend, and I was just like, man, because I saw clips. Um, shout out to FTC and oh, uh, Art of Grappling. I saw some stuff. Um, just still bringing it. it. It's really cool. Her entrance again is one of those iconic entrances where yep. she just zombifies shuffles to the ring and then mm. once she touches those ropes she's fucking dangling from them and everything yep. i i loved everything about her she it creepy was, it, creepy is a great way to describe that i'm taking it one step further the send-off of Allie or the bunny now for yep. everybody else in the undone realm with rosemary that whole sequence of events that that can fuck with you if you're a child and you're watching Impact and you're watching that you're like, oh my god, they like they had blood, they had everything tied to it, but just that whole persona, seeing her kill somebody on live TV, kill in air quotes, but it was it just made for this ominous like we haven't seen that with women ever, like ever. Spoilers was Luna was, was, was on the uh, level, but but. But they these are all... women that are in, independent and in doing it them like they're on their own level with it. It it was something totally creepy and just it yeah. got me when I started seeing that stuff. Well, since we both have Sue, you can go again. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I gotta go Papa Shango. Oh, he's on my list. So. All right, well you know we know him as comma Godfather, Good Father. Anybody you want to know? Him? Yeah, yeah. But he is, he was originally Papa Shango, the voodoo, the voodoo man. My God, seeing this three, four years old, oh, I, I had nightmares. But he thinks he did to the ultimate warrior and things of that whole thing. No, man, the voodoo, that, oof, that skull always got me. The skull face and that. Ten years difference between us roundabout. Yeah. So even at 13, I was like, didn't know wrestling. And I'm not right. saying I know wrestling at all before I get hate. But didn't know what I know about wrestling now. And I'm like, what is this guy? They actually got somebody, a witchcraft person. Yeah. How did they do this? How is he doing all this stuff? And just, I, again, just mind. It was yeah. all mind. And I, I hook, line, and sinker. Line and Singer, it was the perfect case of imagery means everything. Like he just had to be he they described what the voodoo man was to a point and then he fulfilled it. Yeah. Say what you will. Charles Wright played his roles very well and knew oh, what no. he had to do, all of them. Even the MMA fighter, he played them all very well. And when you go down the list of things, Papa Shango played it. And he did what he had, and he did it fantastically. Everything about him, the smoky stick, staff, and all that stuff, it was priceless. By far my favorite gimmick uh, of Charles Wright. Yeah. Because he did it so well. Again, as a preteen, <laughs> yeah. or whatever, oh, you loved The Godfather. You but, you loved it for The Godfather. Yeah, yeah, but we're not here for Godfather. Listen. Right. When my eight, nine year old self thought was in a different state of, oh, this is fucking funny. Like he's just walking out, talking like, you know what I mean? You're prepubescent. You're down the road already. You've hit puberty, right? Right. Me, I'm laughing at this whole thing. But going back, it, but to me, I remember the day I found out I had to have been. I'm going to I'm going to put me out there. I 
it had to have been early 20s when I found out Papa Shango and Godfather were the same guy. And I was like, Mama. there's no way. Yeah, comma. And I'm like, there's no fucking way. And like, this is when I was deep in diving on the internet because I had nothing better to do in college after studies. And I was just watching the wrestling stuff. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And like that, that brain fucked me for a couple of days. Cause I'm just like, I don't understand how this, no this is not happening. Is- the voodoo man just conjured up hose and started walking around with them. I don't understand what the correlate, how this happens, but. I would like to know voodoo if I can do that. <laughs> I digress. All right. Uh, I'm sure he's on both of our lists for one reason. It's a boogeyman. And he's coming to get you. He's coming to get you. Well, he's on mine for like a million, and they include uh, fucking right. worms. But, yeah. Just, uh, again, the the entrance. It's a boogeyman. I'm coming to get you. I was, I was young, and I'm like, yeah. whoa. And then he's eating worms. Nope. You could eat a worm right now on this podcast, and you'd make this list because I think that's we're gonna have nasty a nasty as shit. That's yeah, fucked up within itself. Oh yeah, that's nasty as shit. And then you include the fucking staff that hits himself over the head with fucking fucking clock, clock every day. Staff or- of all of that shit in the worms. By far the scariest fucking thing he ever did was eat that thing off of Jillian's face. What it, I know. Whatever the hell they were doing, it, it was gummy something, but it was a growth that she wore for several months, and then he just ate it off of her face. And I'm like, no, yeah, I'm no, out. Fuck, no, I'm done. I didn't and, eat gummy stuff for a while, by the way. Yeah, and neither did I. It was like, Mm-mm, nope, no, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Big scab, you pussy. Pussy Lord. thing. I think. Oh. oh, go ahead. Um, all right. How many do you have left? Five, maybe six. Yeah, five, maybe six. Okay. Um, I gotta go down the route. Abaddon. Well, we, now the, I definitely only have. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep talking because I split out some of mine, and my list has already dried up a little bit here. But Abaddon, well, I have some that I'm sure you. I'm not being. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but Abaddon. Oh my God! When the first couple times I saw him, it's like, the fuck is going, like, we talked about, Jacob is movie-esque, Luke-esque, is spot-on movie-esque, we talked about Sue Young and all of it, this takes it to the even bigger level, deeper level, and, like, she plays it up perfectly online, she lives the gimmick, per se, you would not be able she to tell her mouth before she gets into the ring, yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't at 46. I can't. I, she, I shudder playing any match with her on Fight Forever, <laughs> let alone watching her in the ring do stuff. I want to see her be on more, more, bigger on TV more. I don't know what she's doing, but my God in heaven, the times I've seen her, oh, <laughs> that, that's, that, that'll fuck with you. If I'm a kid, I'm shitting my virtues. Yeah. And- yeah. And it's not a knock. She's a bigger woman. So she, and she does this. It's not a crawl. It's not a military crawl. It's like a slither to the ring and then she gets up and scurries and. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's creepy. It is very creepy. I'm going to stick with the women. Okay. And go Daphne. Because mm, yep. of the scream queen, the, the shrilling voice, the, just the vampire ness or whatever you want to call just everything about her that stuck in my mind. Just she was that scream queen. She was, she was. who's the scream queen from like the movies. Um, you know who I mean? Yeah, I do. The, the, yeah, the yeah. Death movies and everything. Know that, yeah. This was Daphne in that era in WCW with, and I'm going to tie her with like Vampiro and everything like this, but she was just on the level above Vampiro, above Mortis, above yeah. anybody like that, that she was just deranged spooky to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And you look at her even from her WCW days to even into Impact and TNA days. 
she carried that so that persona so well and she really was the difference from what the other women in the division was and she really introduced that stark contrast she was the first one i think that took the table bumps yep. barbed wire bumps and tna did a lot of things with abyss and just kind of she proved her toughness but also was just this creepy character that you're just like what the fuck is she on she's off on something something? she's on something going on right now like she's like not there she played it perfectly daphne was always a fantastic character that she portrayed is your list right up uh because i've separated kane and undertaker it is pretty much done i will throw out there one name I had it on my honorable mentions as well, so I'll move them over to my list. I had to put the original version of Mankind on there, like the true psychopath Mankind before he came bubbly and Mr. Sacco and all that. But that boiler room Mankind, the boiler room Mankind, the schizophrenic Mankind that was ripping out his hair and just couldn't shriek like a pig and like just oinked and like rocked back and forth. That version of Mankind was just the epitome of, like, that'll screw you up, too. But, and we keep saying this about a lot of them, but for me, when I was watching them, just like, holy shit, is this guy, like, seriously not okay? And we'd find out that there's probably a few screws loose in that head with the things that he did. Yeah, way before that with Cactus Jack, but now way after that with everything that was to come in a couple years of his debut. But Well, you stole one of my. (laughs) I have to, uh, that, that is, You're that, welcome. Uh, using new phone, I have to text my wife that she can come in. So the, the, let's <laughs> hold on for this for a hot oh, this second. Be good. This is the spookiest thing. Mark tackles technology. Um, I have three more on the list. Okay. I know you know all of them. Yeah. Two of these men's prob- men probably still give me nightmares today. Okay. Kamala. Yeah. When he first, well, not first, because I was way young, but when I first saw him in that full headdress and just, this man never spoke for my childhood Mm -mm. and had a handler and would, if the headdress would come off, just go nuts and just (laughs) cripple people. I'm like, oh my God, like the painting, I mean, it was generic yeah. if you go back and look at it, i'm looking at it right now it is it's two stars a moon and and they're all on his belly yeah and just yeah tiger print whatever mm-hmm. and i don't know what they really call it a, a tribal mask i guess I don't right know. yeah yeah the, something that you can buy at uh what's the store that all the women like with the 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 furniture that costs way too much <laughs> that narrows it down uh, is it like Pier One pottery? Oh, one Pier, Pier One Imports. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's you can a buy callback. those there, right? You can buy those for like twenty bucks there. That's yeah. all you had to do is go to Pier One every show. Just scared the shit out of me. Yeah. The other one I can't wait to meet at Wrestlecade. Okay. Abdul the Butcher. Oh, that's a good one. This that, fucking guy was a lunatic. It still is. Well, and that's what it's going to say. He's, he's scary just because he's a fucking loon because just the shit that he would do every fucking match and his, his head oh, now Lord. just looks like chop liver. I mean, it's scar tissue and bust right now on his head and everything about him screamed hardcore before it was hardcore. I don't, yeah. Forks the head. Yep. Uh, I don't know who had him first, but stealing the Sheik's shoes and having his own kind of like bent shoes that could just all be in bent. Again, having to come out and change sometimes or when you're crazy, the, what do they call those? The, the, great, oh, the, pad, the, no, it's not, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. It's, it's not, I keep thinking handcuffs, it's not handcuffs, so we'll move on, but I know exactly, shackles, the shackles, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, those two were kind of go, kind of go hand in hand. And then my last one, just because the story, saw so minimal matches live of him, Bruiser Brody. Mm. 
Yeah. Wasn't a gimmick. Wasn't anything. He lived that. Just spooky man, myth, legend himself. A, a person I never, never ever wanted to meet because he, God rest his soul, scares me. Oh yeah, he he is completely deranged. Yeah, he yeah. Uh, God rest his soul, but good Lord Almighty, just the things you've seen him do in matches, the stories you've heard told about him, it's like mm, 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 no, no, thank you. I'm not going down that dark alley if I see fucking Bruiser Brody hanging out down there. No, fuck that. One, and I know this is horrible. There's definitely more than 20 or whatever we said we were going to do. Yeah. Um, last one I'll mention, honorable mention, is the missing link. Yeah. When he was in his cave, ripping his hair out, yeah. his face and everything. This just crazy ass scary, man. Mm-hmm. Take it to another level. You know I what I mean? The character, the characters. Why do I always want to make everything a caricature? I do love the drawings. I do. Yeah, yeah. I do miss when there's characters like that around. Because if they're done right, it's truly special. And I think in recent times, we're, we, we're in more of a reality state now, obviously. But you turn to guys like Bray Wyatt who have done it right, where it can be truly stand out and be something you can believe in as a real persona or real split down the middle type thing. And that's what makes those characters or caricatures really special <laughs> is those is, is it's the people that can carry it instead of just slapping a gimmick on somebody and saying, well, I hope you can fucking figure it out and maybe you'll succeed. Maybe you won't. And that's why I hope for Abaddon mm-hmm. he get to continue this. We're sad because we think the dark order could have, would have been something special. Yeah. And we left probably somebody that we both really like on the list as a trio. The House of Black. They're teetering there. They're getting there. They're not even honorable mention yet. We love them, but they're just not. They need to do more. They have a lot more to do. They did a lot on Collision this past Saturday night. And we'll get into that on Friday, Aaron, we're recording day for Saturday. But it's more or less like, to your point, they're there, but they're not over the top there. And I think with AEW, it's a lot of slow burns, but a lot of injuries have yep. slowed them down. The whole, the whole House of Black. House Black. Yep. Yeah. Great list. I love it. We had crossover like we thought, but we also had those, some that some of us just didn't think of. Like, Bruiser Brody did not jump to mind, but to your point, he was fucking ridiculous because he was just a crazy lunatic, and that's just how he played it. Throwing yeah. chairs at people and, well, everything under the sun. And I'm sure we have missed some of your favorites, so yeah. when you see this, you listen to it, come back, put some that you think that we should have talked about more, mm-hmm. or made the list, or... Uh, or just list some that we forgot about. Maybe, you know, we'll rekindle this down yeah. the road and say, oh, man, I forgot about Bob Smith and how crazy he was. Because Bob yeah. Smith has been crazy. Bob Smith, you could put a hard Bob Hawley on here, and he's crazy, batshit crazy as well. So go down that path. <laughs> All right, let's take a hot second break and then come back and we'll do our matches then. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Just- that's perfectly fine. This is this is your spooky show. No, it's our spooky show. You're it's the one our, with this break. It's our spotlight. <laughs> My second break. We'll be back. So cute. All right, bye. Hey, this is the Barbie Killer, Haley Shadows. I absolutely hate can crushers, but I'm going to be on it, so stay tuned. Welcome back. And now it's time for matches. That was terrible, but it, it was let out of me in. Let me in. <laughs> We're in here. Get through all the comebacks this week. <laughs> Again, we only we brought three probably main ones that we're going to talk about to the table. Mark brought three honorable mentions as well. The matches, as we said in the opening, can be amazing if done right. A lot of these 
weren't done right, but they made the list. They made the list anyways, but hey, you know, it's it's the thought that counts. All right. Because I'm a dick, I want to do honorable mention second. Okay. You go first. Okay. Um, so I did pull in some matches that, you know, they were kind of hokey, but they had big name characters in here, so it kind of made sense. I'll go the first one. There's nothing scarier than a buried alive match, you know, playing on the fears of being drowned in a pound of 16 tons of dirt and just being covered in it. Wait, this isn't your, this isn't your honorable mention? Yeah, no, this is my. You said we're going matches first. No, I said you do your honorable mentions first. So I probably oh, well. you saw. I thought you said matches first. So I don't. Uh, my honorable mentions. Then I'm going to flip that. So that's part of my list. But this one's going we'll to surprise you. We'll come awful. back to it. We'll come back to it. My big honorable mention that I have is because I'm pretty sure we both have it. So I'm like, I'm going to take it out of my top three. It's Hell in a Cell. And I here's, have on it either. Oh, you didn't? Okay. To me, Hell in a Cell in its ver- original iteration where it could pop up anywhere, it was this program ender, it decimated things, but it has become so watered down that it's just kind of another match type. And we've seen things that are kind of popping up that are like, oh, that was good, they did that well. Like We talked about Becky and Sasha Hell in a Cell, you know, last Friday with the Ask Crane questions and all that. But to me, it's just become so watered down that it's just not what it should have been. And I think when you look back at Sean and Undertaker, Mankind and Undertaker, they set the bar and really it carried into the 2000s until they kind of did the whole pay per view within the itself. The whole pay per view within itself. When they turned it into a gimmick pay per view, it destroyed it because they were rushing to get storylines into the cell, and that really took, I think, the mystique off of it a lot. So that's in my honorable mention. And that's why it didn't make anything for me. Exactly that makes to sense. that point. Yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, my honorable mentions for spooky matches and take them as they may. The zombie match with. This is the only one that I've named. The zombie match with Priest and Miz. Oh, Jesus. Do you see where my honorable mentions are going? Yeah. The Punjabi match. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Could have well, been. Could have been something special, but it was. Been. Yeah. The zombie match could have been, too. Mm-hmm. But Miz but it, had to die for a while, not come back the next week. Yeah. Yeah. This one's for Al Snow. The kennel from hell. <laughs> that could have been a it death could have been something good. It could yeah. have, but go back and listen to four years ago. Al talks about it right on here. Can crushers. The dog, and he talk about it everywhere. He, he, what can you do when these dogs are supposed to be rabid, but they are just having sex with each other outside the ring? Yeah, Kissing it's, everywhere. <laughs> it should have been Valentine's Day. Yeah, it could have been. St. Valentine's Day massacre would have made sense. <laughs> so those are my honorable mentions there's no need to talk about any I'll, of them I'll Go throw ahead. one more out there and I don't know if it's on your list or not but I want to throw it out there because I just thought about it if I go honorable mention Inferno match I have to put out there as an honorable mention for me the the whole thought of a man getting set on fire is something that should be that kind of spooks you a little bit and I think that's I think it rightfully deserves that kind of spot but to me, it just didn't take it over because you knew they had to do protective oh. things to survive that, especially Kane with his Your arm. number one guy I, at that time was not going to burn in front of everybody. No, he was not. There was just no way that was going to happen. And it was like it, they played it up with MVP when he did it, and it was it, it was what it was at that time. Just to throw this out there because it literally just popped in my head, then we'll move on to the real things. The... Paul Bear getting filled with concrete. Concrete, yeah. Oh, yeah, Great American Bash. When they won the match and Undertaker still did it. Yeah. Like, yeah, that that was hokey to begin with, the way they filmed it and everything like that. But, yeah. All right, now the list list. 
And All right, the list list. And she's brought both the the main one, I think, to the table. People, yeah. I listen. I don't know how they do it. I I don't know either. I don't know where the trap door is at or how they get out of there, but they do a fucking phenomenal job with it. And this. The one I always that always sticks out of my mind is the one with Vince because it was just the sh- utter shit show of just beating the shit out of Vince, and that's probably where Vince's mind went is was that night because the shots he took, everything he took, the gra- I think the gravity of that match was fully personified in that realm because the Undertaker went out there to maim and really disfigure really? and destroy Vince. Even though he ended up losing, he still did that, and it still kind of sticks with you. And to me, being buried alive is no joke. It's scary as shit. You add that kind of maiming on top of it, and I think that takes it to another level. Yeah, that duly noted. I, I yeah. couldn't add more to that. Mine, my next one, coffin slash casket. Listen, this is, I never want to be in a casket coffin yeah. until I'm dead. Right. I'm worried that, you know, they get that seal on it and then shit, that's how I'm going to die. I'm not magician man over here that can yeah. get myself out or anything. I know that there's a key that you have to wind and all of this stuff. I Mine wouldn't. Like my Darby and yeah. everybody that's done these casket coffin matches, that's your final resting place if that that's is. where you choose. Yeah. Before we get political or anything else, that's your final resting place. Like, oh yeah. No, 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 oh, no, thank no, you. no. I'm good. The mm-hmm. one and only time I ever want to be in there, I'm not going to know that I'm in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Exactly. That. I think for me, it, it didn't make any list for me because I think that you mentioned Darby in that. When you have the coffin matches and Darby's breaking through the coffin and it kind of destroys the coffin, so it destroys the bit a bit. To me, that's just like, "Eh, I wanted something. I want something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, back in the 90s with The Undertaker, especially making people's coffins and the double wide coffin for Yokozuna, the double wide, double thick, you know, coffin for Yoko, the whole imagery behind him building those, those are scary, very scary images that the can be on. Yeah, the vignettes the, the alone. Itself, but the vignettes about the it. The vignettes alone are what can scare you, right? And yeah. then the matches can be here, there, whatever, especially when Chuck Norris is out there defending the casket, but that's a different story for a different <laughs> time. Uh, but... You know, the match itself was what it was, but those vignettes, man, those really sunk in and kind of gave you that spooky feeling of, okay, he's building this to case his his opponent. The man he's facing is could literally die in there. I'm going to turn this real quick, and if you don't want to answer it, you don't have to. Go ahead. Because I don't know if I can do this. Um, are you going to pre-buy your casket? I'm going to be I like I've thought about it. I, I'll be straight up with you. I've thought about it because there's a lot of planning I'm doing now for elderly family members and that. Trust me, so you're kind of so you're kind of sitting there like I should probably do this now because do you want to see it, though? Like you want to pick what you're the in. To be honest. Kind of. I just I don't I'm not creeped out by it, but okay. that could be because of all of it. I've had to go through many times in my life. You're kind of just like. This is a part of it. What about you? Um, there's times, I'll be full honest, there's times, yes, I want to, but it would be like, I'm going to pick a Detroit Tiger one or yeah. I'm gonna pick a, a pit yes, one. Gonna be a one. It's going to be a related. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or they're going to specially made Can Crusher one. Right. Or, fuck it, I'm getting cremated because it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you you don't know. It can change on a daily basis kind right. of thing, yeah. Literally like, on a daily basis. Oh, well, yeah. Like, I know some family members that are going to do cremation, some that are going to be buried. It just depends on where you're at, and then it's, like, what makes the most sense for you. Right. So, yeah. yeah. In, 
I no, I won't have that. I don't think Cal does to me next week. I don't know. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's oh. move on. All right. <laughs> my number two, I go back to uh, TNA, and I got to go Monsters Ball. I thought that was, especially with the Abyss run Monsters Ball era, that was amazing. Like, it was really a spooky kind of different match type that you had. Uh, that first one with Monty Brown, Raven, and Abyss to all of the ones that preceded it. It just, it, it hit different. It hit different with it. You know, Daphne, we mentioned, you mentioned earlier, is one of your spookiest. She had one too. So the Monsters Ball, really in that TNA mid 2000s era, those matches were priceless and just really can kind of scare the shit out of you if you're not careful with how deep and how disgusting they went with it. Agreed. Uh, agreed. My next one, and listen, it was flawed, and everybody's going to know where I'm going. It was flawed from number one, first day, this, that, and the other. They put it together in minutes prior to the match. Levers didn't work. This didn't work. <laughs> but the concept was there. Like the, I mean, You were never going to see Abdullah getting electrified. They didn't have to show the lever 65 fucking times for them in the ref trying to put it up with a code okay, hanger. Sure, right. And then when it kept falling up and down, up and down, yeah. and up and down. So whoever, yeah. I don't remember, had to turn it off to turn it back on. <laughs> the concept was there for it to be spooky and crazy and everything. It just, it listen, scary. sometimes technology is great. Sometimes technology doesn't work out. Look at other matches that I'm not going to steal one that could have been. The fireworks didn't go off right or this or that. But this could have been something that is. it was essentially a predecessor to Hell in the Cell. Yeah. Yeah. War games, essentially, really, essentially. really. really fun. But this was all like. It's never been done again. Yep. Uh, we know why. Right. But it could have been something. And this is when I was really little. I didn't care then that they turned it off and on and off. Um, and I didn't even notice that. I saw a man die in yeah, my okay. head and... until next week when he came back and he was fine. <laughs> Which I... is crazy. It was very crazy. And that was number three on my list. That was the one I was alluding to earlier. The Chamber of Horrors match was the bastardized baby of war games and what Hell in a Cell was supposed to be. It was like that that evil twin type thing going on. If you ever seen those shows where they hide the evil twin in the attic and then they have the real kid line, running around, that's what it was because it was just it, it didn't work because they'd spent 20 minutes putting it together. Like I tried to do it a seventh grade project. Yeah, like this is how bad it was. But at the same time, to your point, the concept was there. It fit the Halloween Havoc motif. They had the the right – I think they had the right mixture, the yeah. right concept, but the execution failed so spectacularly that it's now remembered as just a joke. And I think that's what kind of gives it an even spookier aspect of it is it was a joke that was that led essentially to a man being electrified alive, but it, it ended up being a joke. So the imagery and everything balanced off of it. The ghost of the chamber of horrors just lives on forever. It does. I do like some of the new things. That's it, right? You have any more? No. Yeah, no, no, no. That was my top three. Yeah. I do like some of the new things that like NXT spin the wheel, make the deal matches. Oh. I mean, those aren't really spooky. And right. they always do it during Halloween Havoc, their two-day pay-per-view, yeah. which isn't a pay-per-view that's on TV, but they pump, pump it up enough. And da, 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 da. I do love those gimmicky type style matches that they're trying to do. They're just not there yet. There's not enough oomph behind them, but yeah. they're trying. Well, and I think you're limited by your time, right? We talk the, the most successful in terms of memory matches that live on, we're born in an era where violence was reigning supreme. You right. could get, a, you could get away with burying somebody alive. You could get away with 
the monsters ball hardcore match. You could get away with hell in a cell bloodying and throwing people off things and people reveled in it and loved it. So I think with a lot of the newer concepts, it's how do you push it over the top, but living within your constraints. And that's not an easy thing to do, especially with spin the wheel, make the deal. Not at all. Yeah. So, yeah. I thought you were actually going to have, um, can I come home yet? <laughs> I thought you were actually going to have one of the uh, exploding barbed wire. Because they're not spooky, but they're they could be glorified well, death matches. I thought I thought about those, but I didn't go that route because, to your point, they can they get very gory, and I think it's what your sense of horror or spooky is with it. Um, I think if you're more masochistic, you're going to go down that exploding barbed wire death match route. But for me. I guess I haven't seen enough of them to fully engulf it as oh, name value alone. Yes, it's scary as shit, but right. for me to fully involve it now, nah, I, I just couldn't go down that route. This was a great concept, Sir Michael Jenks. And I know even within this, we've pulled off maybe next week's hollow next week's next year's Halloween one, but more yep. has come. Yep. It's just, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, this is awesome. So you're going to get a spot like like this minimum once a month. Yep. Not sure where. December you're going to get two of them. Throw that out there right now if you listen to Wednesdays. But we're we're going to rekindle some stuff and talk about oh my god moments, masks, yep. uh whatever. things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. Things that we try to tie together loosely with maybe holidays or maybe, you know, just having fun with it and seeing where we can go with it and how far we can take it. So Memorial Day, Memorial Day, best flag matches. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Let's do it. Or Brooke Hershner, that's the only one. Can we go uh, best America gimmicks? Mr. America, damn it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm still going to go with Juan Cena. <laughs> that's for Cinco de Mayo. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. You're a garbage can, not a garbage can, not. Make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them. Because you never know. Boop, boop. Yeah.